Hello everyone and welcome to BitTech Modding. Today we have something a bit different from the usual uh, project logs and it's about a topic that I wanted to discuss uh, for uh, quite a bit and this week I had the chance to build uh, this uh, water cool PC so I thought it was the best uh, occasion to address it. So as you can see this is a water cool PC built into a Lee and Lee a PC011 Dynamic XL with its usual front distro plate from EK. And the one thing I want to talk about in this video is uh, the popularity of this combo. So in the past couple of years, water cool PCs uh, made in this case together with uh, the help of uh, various uh, types of distro plates have become very popular to the point that uh, like eight builds out of 10 are made like this or are very similar and they've always been the type of user that wants to be different and have the different uh, thing from uh, anyone else. So I was curious to build a PC like this to try understanding why this is uh, so popular now. First of all this is uh, obviously a build for a client that uh, asked me to do one uh, exactly like this so in with this case uh, distro plate uh, and uh, all that stuff and the main points i want to go through uh, on this are uh, first of all uh, the ease of uh, installation so how beginner friendly uh, this kind of configuration is secondly i want to talk about the ease of maintenance so how easy is this kind of configuration to maintain and uh, do works in it uh, after it's completed third is uh, price point so how this kind of configuration places in terms of price tag compared to other types of uh, custom loop which don't require uh, perhaps a distro plate uh, and uh, all of these uh, parallel tubing and finally the aesthetics so how this compares to other types of custom loop so the first point which is the ease of installation ease of work it was actually my main interest because i thought the reason why this became so popular was because it was very beginner friendly and lots of people just went with this configuration because they were beginners and the distro plate would help them uh, routing tubing uh, and uh, all that but it actually turned out at least for me that it was uh, more of a challenge than it is to build a custom loop in uh, the old-fashioned way so with a tube reservoir and uh, like a freestyle tubing instead of all these uh, parallel uh, uh, runs because doing parallel tubing is uh, easy in a way but it's also very difficult because uh, it's uh, very unforgiving. You have to make sure everything is square because otherwise it looks awful. And I thought these distro plates were actually a huge help in uh, making the parallel runs uh, very square and uh, parallel. But at least in my experience, that was not the case because I still had to use a ton of offset uh, fittings to make every run square and parallel. So while I initially thought this was the main reason uh, this configuration became so popular, I actually ended up uh, thinking that uh, it's not because it's actually not uh, easier to build a custom loop uh, this way than it is the old-fashioned way. You also have uh, like double the number of tubing to do because it, it's kind of like uh, when you use uh, pass-through fittings. So you have to run tubes on the panel, which is the distro plate in this case, and also the components. So you're not connecting a component to the other. Instead, you always have to go through the distro plate at every single component. So this leads me to the second point, which is maintenance. And I want to address this because uh, I actually had to uh, put my ads in this uh, after I completed it, because the RGB connector uh, in the lower part of the motherboard actually came loose while I was uh, fiddling uh, in the back to do the cable management. And I wasn't able to reconnect it because there were uh, tubes everywhere so you can see here it's just like a, a wall of tubing which is what happens when you have this kind of distro plate configuration so i gave up uh, trying to reconnect uh, the rgb to that uh, port and luckily enough there was another port on the top of the motherboard so i used that but yeah generally i didn't find this build uh, to be 
very easy to work with, both during and after completion, at least compared to a classic uh, water-cooled uh, build. The third point uh, is uh, price point. So this is an interesting one because when I have a client coming to me wanting a water-cooled build, obviously I always make a parts list for the uh, custom loop. And for standard custom loops, uh, I usually stay between 900 and 1200 euros. But in this case, this whole custom loop cost around 1900 euros or 1800. So it was a lot more expensive than a normal custom loop because you have the distro plates, which is very expensive by itself. And you also have double the number of fittings because again, you have double the tubing to install. So again, this can't be the reason why it's so popular because people usually tend to save money where they can. But since we're enthusiasts, uh, you can actually uh, say the opposite, maybe. There will be a lot of people that like to go all out uh, whenever they can, and it's okay. So there's one last uh, point to touch, and it's the aesthetics. So as much as I love being different and doing different uh, things from the others, I definitely can't hide the fact that uh, this kind of configuration looks very good and they can see why it became so popular in the water cooling community still i would love to see more uh, variety in the builds i see from the community and i hope we'll get there one day but for now it's still amazing that uh, so many people are uh, diving into water cooling and the fact that this combo convinces a lot of people to do the jump can only be beneficial for the water cooling community obviously i would love to know what you guys uh, think about this type of uh, trend and if there's some of you that uh, actually built uh, their PC uh, this way I would love to know what was the main reason why you chose this kind of configuration uh, in case you're thinking about uh, doing something like this uh, specifically with uh, this case and the front distro plate from EK first of all the side mounted uh, fans have to be mounted uh, behind the mounting points because the distro plates with the pump occupies the front section and you won't be able to mount the fans on this side you'll have to mount them on the cable management side and there's still some space left for mounting a radiator as well in there but it's very tight and in this case for example I didn't do that and I just used two 360 millimeters radiators on the bottom and top. As for these two mounting points, I would really uh, think about the thickness of the radiator. For example, the bottom one, if you're having the graphics card vertically mounted, it's very preferable to have a slim one. In this case, it's a 30 millimeter one because otherwise you'll have a hard time trying to reach for the ports uh, on the distro plates and this also depends on the type of vertical mount you use but there will be very little clearance between the graphics card and radiator or fans uh, themselves as for the top it's a bit more forgiving but you can see with a slim radiator it's already pretty tight and i think this is the sweet spot maybe you could use a um, a 45 millimeter radiator and you could still be good to go and lastly you really want to grab some offset fittings because they will help you a ton when mounted on the distro plates to make all the runs uh, parallel uh, to each other so this is all for this video again a bit different from the usual project log but uh, i hope you guys liked it i hope i can help uh, some of you make the decision and i also hope i could help uh, some of you guys who are considering going uh, with this kind of configuration so next week uh, we'll get back to project logs with part two of Project Silverhand. So if you don't want to miss that, I invite you to subscribe to the channel and also follow us on our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, builds.gg. And I also invite you to check out our merchandise shop. You'll find all links in the description. So thank you guys for watching and see you next week.